<laughs> hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the show. Um, I want to talk about the Ryobi battery, uh, the supercharger that Ryobi has, and using Ryobi batteries in and making power banks that you can use. So um, I just received a, a file, a PDF file from a gentleman out there, and thank you, John, uh, that he sent me his version of the supercharger, turning it into a power bank. So basically he has six batteries plugged into it. He can plug it into the charge, into the wall outlet, charge it up, unplug it, carry it to where he needs it, and you have unplugged, you have a plug-in on it that you can plug uh, into to draw the power off of all six of those batteries all at the same time. It has them all hooked up in parallel. So you end up with, if you have six batteries in there that are two amp batteries, you have a 10 amp hour battery pack. If you put five amp hour batteries in there, uh, then you have uh, a 30 amp hour battery pack. And a nine amp hour, it's even better. But his design was really very simple. Basically, he took, if you think about the wiring diagram part of this, he pulled it back off of the unit right here. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. And if you kind of look at this, you can kind of see that there's a a printed circuit board and one here and here and there's a third one here that lays flat these two are connected to is what making the connection to each of these batteries individually and it's in a sense the back to the motherboard where it does the calculations for which one to charge up and how much to charge and all that stuff so and it's a I've never been a fan of this unit I bought it thinking it was going to be great but it has its drawbacks. But what he did to actually turn it into a battery bank was at the positive terminal on each of these connections, what he did was he came in here, found the pin where the soldering connection took place between that terminal that connects to the battery and the printed circuit board. And he soldered down right onto that solder point on each of the positives a diode. Um, he used a 15 or a 20 amp diode or somewhere around that. I, I, I'll have a link to the diodes that he recommended and you can take a look at them. And I, He got them off of Amazon so I'll leave that link in the video description if I don't forget. If I do just let me know and I'll make sure I put it out there right away. Um, and then on the other side he just made a, a hard connection and so he ran two wires through connected all the diodes to the one wire, and that was the positive, and the other wire he connected to the negative side of each of them. And then he brought them out the side and put a uh, XT60 connector on there. That gave him full access to whatever batteries he put in here. He has a parallel connection between them with a the diode so they can't backfeed into the batteries, and it allows him to pull that battery power out of those without interfering with any of the things that they had engineered in to do the charging aspect. And then by doing that, and you put it back together, the only real change you see on it is out the side, you see a little plug-in hanging out to an XT60 plug-in. And all you have to do is plug into that and you have tap into all those batteries. So it's basically a battery pack. It's a great way of doing that. It's by far, I've seen a couple of different designs of making these into battery packs. That is by far the best example, best way to do it that I have seen. And I can see where that really would work very, very well. And what's the beauty of it is, is you can have a pretty powerful battery pack. Let me put this back in real quick. So I don't fall apart and set this out of the way. Okay. But... The biggest problem with using this unit for that purpose and also using it for the charging is if you do the math. Now, I will tell you the one thing I learned about the Ryobi battery, uh, all of their chargers, the factory chargers, all charge all batteries at a rate of 2 amps per hour. 
And I think I've not found that to be very. And the reason that I think that was is that when they originally came out with the charger and the battery, it was the two amp hour battery. And they used to brag back then that they could charge the battery up in an hour. That means that that two amp hour, that two amp hour battery from Ryobi uh, could be charged at a 1C rate. Uh, and then as these batteries got bigger and bigger, they stopped talking about that. And um, now you'll notice you put a five amp hour battery that's dead, it'll take you two and a half hours for that thing to charge up, which if you do the math is two amps per hour. So, and also the nine amp, it takes four and a half hours to charge one up from being dead to fully charge again on a standard Ryobi charger. What that tells me is that the slow rate of charge on those is the same no matter what battery you put in there rather than saying, oh, a 9 amp battery can be charged at a 1C rate too. Why not? If the 2 amp hour battery can be, it's only just more cells hooked up together. You should still be able to charge it at the rate uh, that each battery can take in. So, in theory. So, my thought is, is that with going back to this supercharger, if you think about the charging aspect of this, the way it is designed is you put six batteries in there. It'll start on the first battery, mark number one, number two, three, and all the way up to six. It'll charge this battery first. Then when it's fully charged, the lights change and it switches over and it starts charging the next one and progressively goes through all six batteries that way. That means that you're charging six batteries when you put them all in here, but it only charges them one at a time at two amps per hour. That means that if you have run these batteries all the way down, a five amp hour um, battery, if you had six of them in here, and you run them all the way down, you plug this in to charge, guess how long that takes for that thing to charge? Yes, 15 hours. And that is where using this as a charger is why I just, myself, I, I don't think I would ever use this as a charger. I think I would like to plug it into my power wall so that it will be plugged into solar only. Then maybe I could throw batteries in here and let them charge up in their sweet time because I'm not in any hurry. As opposed to if I need to charge four up in a hurry, I just use four individual chargers instead of this because I can charge all four up in the same hour that way. Whereas on this, it's going to take you four times as long to charge four batteries. So that's the only drawback to leaving in the charging capabilities. Is it handy? Yeah, it's probably easy to be able to go plug it in for a while and get some more juice out of it. But to really fully charge, to go from discharge to full charge, this thing does not really do very well in my book as a charger. So that's why I don't care. I'm just going to take all the charging features out of it and not think about it anymore. Um, but it is a great design, and if you really are ha can live with that recharge slowly, just leave that all together. He showed how to do it, and why not? And I think that is a great idea, and I may do that to this just so that I can use it as a battery pack, but I probably would still pull the batteries out and charge them in another methodology simply because of the time it would take to charge it from this. But it's nice to have it there in a the pinch if you need it, maybe. So uh, I'm going to probably follow his design from that what he sent me and probably do that, something like that on here, so that I have a quick six battery power pack. Uh, so I can put six Ryobi batteries in here. And if you put six nine amp hour batteries in here, um, then you're talking about a 54 amp hour unit and almost a thousand watt hours at your fingertips just by Ryobi batteries. So it has some advantages and maybe I would do that and just put batteries in here that pretty much would live in here most of the time as a power bank. And then if I need to use one for something else, I can grab one out of it and use it somewhere else, charge it up, bring it back and plug it back in. In the meantime, I can be rotating these and charging them and letting them discharge as I'm using it and we're talking about if you're off power, off grid and you gotta you run things off of battery power anyway I think that it's a great idea and now for again I'm actually enthused about maybe I might just do that and have a good power pack at my disposal by throwing all my battery packs all my batteries into one 
place and have this larger battery pack if I want it. And again, you could put just four in there if you want and do the same thing and you just have less amp hours and use the other two elsewhere. So um, I think it is a very versatile tool to have in your FOGS uh, strategies. So, but the thing I was going back to, I want to talk about these Ryobi batteries real quick one more time. And that is that I always use the battery charger from the factory to charge batteries up. And the reason I do that is because um, these batteries, uh, I don't know enough about them to really start to really push the envelope up till now. Well, I'm finally starting to form some opinions about it, what you can do under a load and things like that. And uh, I think uh, you can actually charge this at a 1C rate. So a 9 amp hour battery, I ought to be able to charge at 9 amps. So I may design my own battery pack charger using a uh, boost converter or some kind of converter and be able to adjust the uh, current that you can push into it. So that if I put a 9 amp hour battery in it to charge, I would dial in for 9 amp hours to charge it up. Then I can charge all my batteries in that same hour period, just like you can the 2 amp hour one. Um, will that hurt them? I, obviously, the faster you charge them, the lo shorter the lifespan will be of that battery in the long term, and long term wise. How much of a difference? <clears throat> but I don't think it would damage it immediately by doing that. Uh, so, but I won't know until I try it. So I'm going to start discharging and charging these 9 amp hours. I have two of them for experimental reasons. And I'll be starting to discharge and charge them. <coughs> Excuse me. To put them under some stress testing for both discharging. Because uh, I've, so far, I think I, these things will discharge, this 9 amp hour battery. Uh, in fact, the 5 amp hour too will ch discharge at a 5 amp hour, I mean at a 10 amp hour rating. So you can discharge up to 10 amps. That's uh, pretty good, especially on the 5 amp. That's a 2C discharge capability, which is pretty big. But I don't know for sure. We're going to play with them a little bit, and I'll probably use one of my uh, 5 amp hour batteries too, eventually. And I'm going to just test them a little bit. But I'm really anxious to get a, my own version of a charger to be able to charge these Ryobi-style batteries. And when I say Ryobi, I'm just talking about the style battery. This battery has, you know who is home. So, um, anyway, I think that, I don't know if I should answer that or not. Nah, I'll be back. She'll, she'll wait. <clears throat> but this battery, I think can, you can get a lot more out of it if you can charge it a little faster in the scheme of things around fogs. Anyway, that's kind of what I have in mind. I am putting together, I was started on this a couple years ago, and it actually functions, but I really need to clean it up and get it screws in it to hold it together and all that, because uh, it's got wires running everywhere. So I just need to clean that up and get it going. And that's a four battery Ryobi battery pack that I'll be able to use. So um, I'll show you that here as soon as I get that one done, if I ever finish it. Now, although I think I have more of an incentive now to really do that. So... Anyway, that's about it. I think I'm done rambling about batteries. That's what I've kind of learned about them. <clears throat> but we're going to find out because they keep it a secret um, how much of a rating you can get out of these. But if you look at what kind of batteries they're using in it, you should be able to get the specs on those batteries and that'll give you a good idea. Obviously, the BMS may turn that and trim that down to make it less to help protect the batteries. I don't know how the BMS works on these things. That's the big mystery, and nobody ever seems to know really what's going on, and Ryobi keeps it kind of a secret. So, But we're going to try to get to the bottom of it, what we can do with this battery and what it will do and won't do, and go from there. Because I think having the multi mini, smaller batteries to fill the big battery pack from, or multiple large battery packs, using your small batteries and rotating them in and out is a better way to keep going because you can be charging part of the batteries while you're using the other part of the batteries and you can keep a flow going that way so that during the day you can find ways to charge them up and at night just go through the night on the batteries that you have charged up so i think it'll work i think it works better than having one big super power uh power wall and trying to wire that into your house and then that gets pretty expensive in a hurry and I'm not trying to live off-grid. I just want to be able to get by and be convenient, comfortable, 
during the off-grid times that do occur here in in southern Wisconsin and across the United States. And I think it's going to be a little more predominant as this summer rolls on this year. So stay tuned and see if I'm right or wrong in the year from now. But I think we'll look back and say, yeah, I should have had a good fog system set up for my own home for when that power goes out. Because I suspect we're going to see a lot more of that around the country. Anyway, thanks for coming by. Uh, don't be afraid to leave comments and your thoughts about this whole thing. And if I'm miss, if I'm wrong about something, tell me so I'll know that I'm wrong. Uh, this is just what I have surmised from what I've seen about these batteries. And uh, again, thanks, John, to who gave me that file. If you're interested in getting that file, I'll ask him and see if I can share that file directly. And if I can, you can email me at my email address, and I'll mail it back to you directly. Uh, I'm only mailing it to one-on-one, -on -one, so if you try to have a whole bunch of CCs that you want mailed to them too, uh, it'll only be a reply to sender only. So just one at a time. It, there's not that many of us watching this anyway, as you know. So uh, I don't think it's a big deal, but I don't mind sharing it. I just don't know if he wants me to or not and until he gives me permission. Uh, I... I, you know, I can't send them out, but I'll just start doing that. So if you want to do this, just send me the email, uh, your email, and I'll make sure that uh, as soon as I get permission from me, in the next, hopefully in the next day or so, I'll be able to send those out. So just let me know. Leave your comments down below. Hit that like button. Let's me know I'm doing something right. Uh, most importantly, though, please come back again because... Hmm. <sighs> I'm I'm nowhere near done. Thanks. And we'll see you guys again very soon.